Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about nuclear medicine technologists, also known as NukeMed Techs. And I'm going to give you the job overview, the education requirements, the likes and the dislikes of this profession, and then I'm going to go over the detailed salary statistics so you can know exactly how much these individuals make on average. All right, so let's get started. What does a nuclear medicine technologist actually do on the job? Well, these individuals use scanners to create images of a patient's body or a body system so that other healthcare professionals like doctors and so forth can then examine those images and check for blockages or examine tumors or what have you. They will often work in specialized areas for example, my wife is a cardiac nurse. She has worked alongside a lot of nuclear medicine technologists. They will come in and inject radioactive drugs that will then circulate in the heart and they can check for blockages and so forth. So that's a little bit about what these individuals do. What are some of the daily tasks that a nuke med tech will do though? Well, first of all, they will ex explain imaging procedures to patients and they'll answer any questions that a patient may have about a procedure. They'll also follow safety precautions to make sure that they are not overexposed to radiation or that their patients are not overexposed to radiation. And that is a risk in this job. And a lot of times they'll wear special rings and or badges and these devices will alert them if they have been overexposed to radiation. They will also examine machines that they use for the scannings to make sure that they are working properly. They will prepare the radioactive drugs and administer them to patients via the mouth, via inhalation, or other means. They will also monitor the patient after they've administered those drugs just to make sure that they don't have any kind of adverse reaction. They will also operate the scanners themselves and uh, take the detailed images and they'll also keep detailed records of procedures. So that's a little bit about what a nuke med tech does on the job. What are the education requirements? Well, you usually have to have either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, depending on what your employer requires or what the state requires. Now, what's interesting is that if you already have a degree in a related field, such as nursing, for example, sometimes you can go and take a 12-month certification course, and then you can work as a nuclear medicine technologist. And of course, you are going to have to have clinical time, just like with nursing. So you'll have to have clinicals with this profession. And then once you complete all your education requirements and your clinical hours and so forth, you may have to become licensed by the state and or certified. And that depends, again, on your employer and or your state. Now, if you, get, if you become certified, you can do that through the American Registry of Radiological radiologic technologist which is the ARRT or you can do it through the nuclear medicine technology certification board the NMTCB and those will allow you to obtain certification in nuclear medicine technology there are also specialty certifications that you can get such as the positive emission tomography also called PET scans is what they'll do or nuclear cardiology so those are some additional certifications you can get those are the education requirements if you want to become a nuke med tech all right now let's talk about some of the likes and the dislikes of this profession one of the things that nuke med techs like about their job is that they have a specialty focus they have their trade and they focus on their trade only and they don't have to deal with a lot of general health issues that other uh, individuals like say a nurse might have to deal with another thing is that they will perform the same test procedures and the same scanning procedures over and over day in and day out so they develop a high level of competency they feel very skilled they feel very comfortable on the job and they like that Another thing is that they will deal with patients one-on-one -on -one, and they like being able to just sit back and focus and talk to a patient and educate them and, and use those scanners and, and insert the radioactive substances and so forth. And finally, they like the technology um, and they will use sophisticated machines and scanners and so forth. So they like the technical aspect of it. What are some of the dislikes? Well, one dislike is that sometimes, depending on where they work, they might have to be on call and they don't like that. Another thing is that there are not a tremendous amount of jobs for this profession. I'll get to that in just a moment. So there can be job shortages in some areas or it can be somewhat competitive to uh, uh, on the job. Another thing is that you are constantly having to relearn new procedures because the technology and the research is always changing and so sometimes they will even though they like the technology they they dislike having to constantly 
learn new procedures and, and new drugs and so forth. And then finally, there is an exposure risk to radiation. And of course, radiation can be very dangerous. And a lot of times, like I said before, they will wear those special devices to make sure they're not overexposed. But even so, accidents can happen. And just to tell you a quick example of that, my wife was working alongside of Nuke Med Tech one day and they were trying to insert a cap on a device and the cap was actually the wrong cap and it was it was smaller than what they should have used and they were trying to jam it on and radiation actually squirted out completely covered my wife and she had to go through this whole decontamination process they actually checked her and she was giving off radiation on her body and to make matters worse she was actually pregnant at the time and so she called me up. She's like, hey, I just want to let you know there was an accident at work. I got squirted with radiation. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like panicking. But uh, thankfully, everything turned out okay and the pregnancy turned out okay. But that is a real risk um, with this job. Now let's talk about some of the salary information. Uh, first of all, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is where I get all this information, this job is projected to grow 20% between years 2012 and 2022. And that is pretty good. That's faster than average, but there are not a lot of jobs. There's only about 20,900 jobs in the United States. And throughout that whole decade, it's only going to add about 4,200 jobs or so. So there are jobs out there, like I said before, it's somewhat competitive, but you can work your way into this profession if you're interested. Now, how much money do they make? Well, the average hourly wage in the United States as of 2014 was $35.21, and the annual salary $73,230. Now, that is just an average. You may make more or less depending on your certification, what the state in which you live, the industry in which you work, whether you're entry level or at the end of your career and so forth, it's just an average. So I'm going to go through some of those things right now. What industries had the highest level of employment for Nuke Med Techs? Well, general medical and surgical hospitals came in at number one. The average salary there is $72,980. Offices of physicians came in at number two. The average there, $74,980. And then medical and diagnostic laboratories, number three, $68,740. Now, what was the top paying industry for Nuke Med Techs? Well, number one, colleges, universities, and professional schools, believe it or not, was the top paying industry, $84,700. Next, outpatient care centers, $78,450 was the average there. And then specialty hospitals, the average salary, $76,700. Now let's talk about the states. What states paid the most money? Number one, California, $98,320 was the average there. Hawaii came in at number two at $85,590. And then New Jersey came in at number three at $84,970. What about the lowest paying state? South Dakota came in at the lowest at $57,170. And they actually tied with West Virginia. So South Dakota, West Virginia, both had $57,170 as their average. And then Kentucky was next at $59,890. And if you want to know uh, the statistics for all 50 states and look at some other statistics, you can go to the description in our YouTube video below. There should be a link to our website and you can look at an article that has a little bit more uh, detail there. So that's a little bit about nuclear medicine technologists, a pretty interesting profession. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I have a whole series of healthcare professions on our YouTube channel. We have a playlist. So you you may want to check that out if you want to see the salary statistics for other professions. Thank you so much and have a great day.